to start again from kindergarten to college, different schools doing things differently. The Chicago Archdiocese is set to begin in-person classes this fall. The Archdiocese says it's following CDC guidelines as well as state and local public health departments. Everyone over the age of two will have to wear masks. Students and teachers will undergo daily wellness checks when they arrive. Teachers and students will be placed into essentially a homeroom type of learning environment where they'll stay together and minimize unnecessary encounters with others. Parents will have the option to keep a child home and do online learning. Now, if someone does test positive for COVID, there are contingency plans in place as well. If a student becomes positive, that entire cohort is going to be asked to quarantine along with the teacher being asked to quarantine for the required 14 days, at, during which electronic learning will be used, e-learning, distance learning will be used to keep that cohort still in school. Mr. Lombardo also says, by and large, Catholic schools have bigger campuses than public schools and will allow for people to spread out more. Meantime, a teacher from a local Catholic school is raising concerns about the in-person learning plan. She says it's not safe. Elaine Sage is a teacher at St. Francis Xavier School in Wilmette. Joining us now to talk about all this. Good evening. We thank you so much for being with us, Elaine. Hi, thank you. Thank you for having me. Your initial response to Mr. Lombardo's laying out of the Archdiocese plan. Um, it, it's not safe, and the schools are not larger than public schools. Actually, some of them are quite small. They're older. Um, we, um, I don't think they're listening to the science, and they're not listening to the public. The science says that we should be social distance six feet apart. At our school, it is going to be three feet to five feet without room for a teacher to go down the aisles. Um, Let's talk about that three to five feet because we've been hearing six feet all along since the no, quarantine no, no. started. That's, I, that's, that's what the CDC guidelines says and that's what Dr. Fauci also um, said. It could turn out to be six to nine feet because we don't know enough about this virus. So um, three feet was from the American Academy of Pediatrics and I would like to know where they got their data from because that's just wrong. Three feet is not far enough. Um, public opinion, uh, Associated Press today came out with a study, nine out of 10 people don't think that it's safe enough to open the schools. And as, as you've seen across the country, schools that have opened are shutting. And there's a reason for that. The virus is mutating and it's rapidly spreading and the numbers are going up. It is not safe. Elaine, let's... Uh... The American Academy of Pediatrics also says, and the Archdiocese agrees, that it's better for kids to learn in person, better for their social skills. So let's play devil's advocate. What's wrong with doing that until there is a positive test somewhere I or other totally along agree the with, I totally agree. Here's the thing. We are in unprecedented times. It's a global pandemic. We cannot go to normal, back to normal just yet. Superintendent Rigg wants all of the schools to open full capacity five days a week. The parents and teachers want that too. I love teaching. All, all my colleagues love these kids. That's ideal. But this is a new normal right now. We cannot go back to what was normal yet. Hopefully someday if people, you know, keep wearing their masks, social distance, washing their hands, Kids are kids. They're going to take off their masks. They're going to sneeze. They're going to pick their nose. They're going to do all sorts of things. How do you social distance children? How do you keep them from keep to, how do you, how do you, how do they keep their masks on? Just that simple thing. When a child gets sick, how can I go up to that child if I'm supposed to stay six feet away? Elaine, if, what do you propose? What would you like to see done? I because school's about to, to open. See. Right. Two, we have two weeks, and, and the, the parents and faculty have not been given a clear outline of opening policies, and that comes from the archdiocese. They're responsible for that. They need to help our, our schools out and give them clear, stark rules. I would suggest remote learning to begin with. Give it a month. Reassess. Are the numbers going up? Is it safe? We, can't, we have 17 to 22 kids in every cohort. You cannot have 22 kids in a classroom and be safe. So, you know, remote learning for the first month, reassess if it's, if it's feel safe, half the kids come. 
you know, the hybrid method maybe. Uh, Elaine, uh, are you hearing yes. some of the same things from some of your colleagues, a few of your colleagues, all of your colleagues? Yeah, we have a Facebook page. It's all of the 500 Archdiocesan teachers are on it. It's a private page. Everyone is scared to death. People aren't sleeping, they're anxious. The parents and families don't know what to do. They're afraid. They're, you know, they have to go to work. They have to work remotely from home. It is, it's huge for families and, and faculty, but especially the kids. They're terrified. These poor kids have been through since, you know, March. And so they go to school, they're gonna see, everyone's in a mask, the teachers are in a mask. Um, and I, I, right now I heard that the schools are going to live stream um, for the kids who aren't going to come back in class. Well, live stream for them, so they're gonna sit there and watch. They mm -hmm. can't interact, but if we were Zooming with them, we have really good platforms for that. We could, we could, we could interact with the kids. Right. Well, that's Elaine, not an option. I know you're also concerned about those who may be hearing impaired wearing masks and things like that. And you say there's Definitely. nothing planned for them. And also, it, will you go to school when, when it's supposed to start? I can't, I can't. I'm, I'm 63. My husband is a cancer survivor. I have grandchildren. I have children. I, I haven't even hugged my daughter. Mm -hmm. And she, she, now she's pregnant. I can't hug her. So when I, if I walk into that school, I could get sick, I could bring it home, I could give it to a child in my class. I'm a reading, um, a reading and writing special, not a reading and writing support teacher. And so I work for, with children K through six. So mm -hmm. I'll be in several different cohorts. I requested that to work remotely, and I have not heard back. Mm. I think we got about requested to work remotely, and they were told they have to figure it out. We have about less than so, a minute um, left here. Uh, yes. Have you made your feelings known to the archdiocese or others like you, other yes, teachers? Yes, um, I wrote a letter to um, our, our principal. Um, I've written letters to Pritzker. I wrote to um, Cardinal Subis's office. Um, yeah, everyone, everyone's been writing letters and there, there really haven't been that many responses back. I've gotten, I did not get a response. And are you planning to get the American Civil Liberties Union involved, the ACLU? Um, we have a, we have plan B right now. I'd, I'd rather not go into that right now um, because I need the approval of the other faculty. Mm -hmm. um, we're a very tight group and um, yeah, we have a plan B. That's all I can say right now. Well, it's very difficult for everyone right now. It is, and I yeah. feel for the families and children especially. All right, yeah. Elaine Sage, be safe, be well. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Bye.